Thank you. Hi, everyone. My name is Kent Wakeford, and I'm Chief Operating Officer of Kabam. Today, I'm going to be talking about bridging China and the West. To provide context for the discussion today, I'm going to provide a, a brief history of Kabam and then talk about two key values that we have at Kabam and thread those through the narrative of the discussion. So Kabam started in 2009. We're based in San Francisco. And today we have offices in London, Berlin, Beijing, Vancouver, and Austin, Texas. We build free-to-play core games for mobile devices, browser, and Facebook. When we started the company in 2009, we were 20 people. Today, we're over 800 people worldwide. And to provide the context for why we're talking about bridging to China today, I want to talk about two values that we have at Kabam. And that is, the first one is to constantly think about and identify what are the opportunities in front of us. To identify those opportunities. And the second is to adapt adapt our entire business to focus on those, those opportunities in front of us. So when we started the business, Kevin Chu, the CEO of Kabam, identified the opportunity to bring core immersive games to the Facebook platform. We adapted the entire business to focus on developing and then servicing the games on this new platform. A lot of people said that there wasn't a market for it, but Kevin passionately believed in it. We adapted the business, and we launched a game called Kingdoms of Camelot, which became one of the largest and highest grossing games on Facebook. And that franchise has since grossed over $200 million in revenue. Fast forward, we saw the opportunity. We identified the opportunity to bring our games to the web. We adapted our entire business to rethink how we ran our business, how we operated these social games to bring them to a browser. Reinventing the social dynamics, the infrastructure, and the backbone of how we ran these games. We launched Kabam.com, and today that platform generates one and a half times as much revenue as our Facebook business. Fast forward, mobile identified the opportunity. We adapted our entire business from how we develop games, how we operate games, the gameplay, the session lengths, the social dynamics of the game. Adapted it all throughout the entire company to go after the mobile opportunity. The result, in 2012, we launched a game Kingdoms of Camelot on mobile. It was the highest grossing game and application on all of iOS in 2012. Fast forward 2013. The next major step for Kabam, once again, is identifying where is the market going. And as we look at the mobile platforms, we see that mobile is becoming much more like console development, high fidelity immersive gameplay, storytelling. So what we've done is we have refocused the people that are part of Kabam. We have brought in great teams like Exploding Barrel. And the beginning of those results are, have come to market. Fast and Furious was the editor's choice in over 100 countries with, uh, with Apple. You're going to see, starting the end of this year, throughout next year, a whole slate of games that are really trying to kind of have that ethos of AAA development. 2014. 2014 is the year that we identified Asia as the growth opportunity for the company. Once again, we are adapting our company to go after this opportunity. Identify the opportunity and adapt. Recently, we announced 
an investment and a strategic partnership with Alibaba. Alibaba invested $120 million into Kabam, but more importantly for us, it is a strategic partnership to bring our games to this market. And why? Because we know that games are a global phenomenon. Consumers love games. We see it. We know it. We feel it. And our focus as a company at Kabam today is focusing on China. Why China? Of all of Asia, China is the biggest market. It, has the, it is the fastest growing market in the world, and it has the largest mobile audience in the world. To provide some context for this, in China, in 2013, there were 358 million mobile game players. It's a big number. In the US, there's 131. In Japan, there's 50. China is two times larger than the US and Japan combined. The game market in China is one of the largest in the world for free-to-play gaming. And if we just look at that, kind of those bottom two kind of parts of the graph, mobile is growing to be a 30 billion dollar market. 30 billion dollars in just China alone. If you think about kind of the hardware, and when I talk about hardware, I'm talking about mobile and tablet hardware, smartphones. Asia represents the biggest install base of smartphones and tablets anywhere in the world larger than almost the rest of the world combined. To provide some context for this, if you look at the growth rate of mobile devices in Asia, it's growing 20% year over year, whereas North America is growing at 8%. The install base in China, in Asia alone, is six times larger than the US. Six times. And the revenue that is generated from those games in Asia is greater than North America and Europe combined. It's a huge market. But here's the rub. Western games only represent 16% of the market. 16%. Why? In the West, and I can focus on in this room today, we have some of the world's best game developers. There is deep AAA experience. How to build those games, those, those touch points with consumers that resonate. Innovative gameplay. It's being built right here. So why are we only at 16%? The answer is, it's complicated. Now, one of the first things people talk about when they talk about the differences between the West and China are the platform differences. In the West, we have iOS, we have Android, Enough complication there, just trying to get all the, all the kind of things for the devices right. In China, the Android market is highly fragmented. There are over 200 different app stores alone in China. But this isn't where the, where the complexity is. The complexity is that the entire ecosystem is different, the entire ecosystem. So as we talk about bringing our games, bringing Western games to this market, 
we have to adapt. We have to adapt our way of thinking and our way of doing business because every aspect of the ecosystem is different from discovery to distribution to monetization to social features within the game. It's all different. So how do we enter the market? So there's, as, I, as we've been exploring this, there's been really two kind of key ways that we've seen to enter the market. Work with a publisher. There's a lot of great publishers in China. Or go solo and work with a number of the different platforms out there. Either strategy you choose is going to mean work. So as we think about kind of how you want to get into the market, recognize there is work to be done. Working with a publisher will take a lot of that work off your shoulders, but you're still going to have to do work. Now, if you go the pub publisher route, just make sure you understand the economics. Because for every dollar that a consumer pays, those various payment platforms and distribution platforms are going to want to take their cut, and they're going to take roughly between 25 to 45 percent, depending on the platform. Some are even more. The publisher is going to want 50% of what's left. So as you go into a market, recognize that the economics are different. Now, you work with a great publisher. They could actually hopefully deliver a lot more for you in that market, but they're going to expect kind of a fair compensation for it. So this is one of the first kind of choices that you want to think about as you move into the market. The next is understanding what it takes to be successful in this market. And I've really I've bucketed into six areas uh, that I found are important to think about. Culturalization, the social features of, you, of your game to the extent that your game has social features, all the various technical considerations, discovery, payment, monetization, and then live operations once your game is live. So let's talk a little bit about culturalization. Culturalization is not using Google Translate to translate your game. It is deep translation so that it resonates with consumers. It is changing the art styles, the icons, the splash pages, the objects in the game, changing the whole UI. If you're going to bring your game to China, look at, game, look at some of the top games in China, and you will see the UI differences are at opposite ends of the spectrum than our games. Lots of things on the screen, big icons, flashy, lots of timers. It's very different. Think about kind of the experience that consumers in that market expect. The next is the economy, and I'll talk a little bit about that in a, in a couple slides from now. But think about scaling down some of your prices if you're doing free to play. Think about impulse buys using payment SMS. It's different. And last, think about kind of the tutorial for your game. Players in China specifically like longer tutorials. Very easy progression that's very rewarding. Now, what this means as a mobile game developer is this actually may mean that you have to not only make changes on the front end, on the client, but also on the server, because now the player coming out of your tutorial may be level five instead of level one. So really, you have to think through some of the issues that, that come with this. The next is social features. To the extent that your game leverages social in any meaningful way, there are tremendous impactful social graphs within China. Leverage them. Bring them into your game. Tap into the billions of users who use the different social platforms out there. On the technical side, the expression of the, of the great firewall in China, it is real. If you don't have servers in China, expect there to be latency issues. Now, the good news is there are solutions. Uh, 
Amazon recently announced that they're bringing AWS to China and starting to launch AWS. There's another company called uCloud. There's other solutions out there in China. Your, your partners, your publishing partners may have solutions for you as well. But latency, if you're not hosted in, in China, can be an issue for your game. The next is file size. When you're building your great games, and everyone in this room are AAA game developers, you're building deep, immersive, high fidelity games with probably very large file sizes. How do you scale those down? Can you take out some of the intro videos? Can you take out some of the animations? Can you use progressive downloads? The data plans tend to be very low. There's a lot of low-end devices in China. And if you want to get that penetration, you're the, you want to shoot for between 50 to 100 megs, depending on the type of game. That's today. You know, things emerge, you know, evolve quickly. So hopefully next year, year after, this changes. But this does become a challenge for great AAA games. The next is device QA. So we have a lot of devices here that, that we have to QA. You never think about the latest uh, mobile device from Xiaomi. It's one of the top selling devices in China, or any of the other big handset developers in China. They're different. It means you've got to rethink how you do QA. Talked a little bit in the beginning about discovery. There are over 20 different carriers that you could integrate with for billing. That's 20 different SDKs you've got to integrate. There are over 200 different app stores. That's a lot of technical work. You got to think about what are the right companies, the right carriers, the right payment solutions, and the right partners to integrate with. The other is managing these relationships. How do you make sure you get featured and re-featured and re-featured again and again on these platforms? Because you could do it. The games that you build should be re-featured again and again because they're that good. The next is on monetization. So if you use in-app purchases for your games, which we do, you have to think about how do you optimize monetization specifically for this market? How do you integrate payment SMS, very fast, impulse buys? Now, you're capped on SMS at about 20 RMB a day, so you have to think about this is just for small buys. But if your game is, is conducive to small, fast purchasing, it's great. High conversion rates. Pricing, generally, think about scaling it down. Think about potentially moving some of the, kind of, some of the, the items that are, you purchase with soft currency Move it to a hard currency with an impulse buy. And then remember to rebalance the entire economy because you've now shifted everything. If your games rely on in-game ads for monetization, there's a whole ecosystem of companies that provide that for you. And they're there. Same for offer walls. If you leverage offer walls in your games, there's a whole set of new companies to work with. And the last is live operations. Once your game is live, don't forget about the market. Think about localized content for the market. Think about culturally relevant events for that market. Think about your customer support. How do you provide the customer support to these consumers who are playing in China, different time zones, different languages? And then lastly, think about VIPs. People often talk about them as whales. In China, they're referred to as VIPs. And most free-to-play game companies have dedicated teams that just talk to their VIPs. They get, up, they get on the phone and talk to them. They have personal relationships with them. They provide white glove service to these groups of players who spend tens of thousands of dollars in their game. It's a different level of service than we, we've historically provided to kind of this group of players. But it is, it is what the players expect in China and in Asia.
So as we think about China, we've identified the opportunity. It is the biggest market for free-to-play games. It's the fastest growing market. There is a wide open opportunity for great games to come to China. And as game developers, as game publishers, we need to adapt. We need to adapt how we run our games. We need to adapt how we think about game development. We have to think about kind of everything that goes around the game in terms of the, all the inputs into the game, the social features of the game. We need to adapt because the opportunity is huge and the opportunity is right now. Thank you.